Good morning, everyone. Afternoon, evening. Thank you for your patience and understanding and needing to change the time of our contemplative practice this week. Um, I am doing better and able to talk, which is good, uh, without coughing constantly. But I will let you know now if I start to, then um, my apologies. So let's take a moment and drop in together and just um, take some time to center ourselves. So I invite you to close or lower your eyes, what's ever most comfortable for you. And let's take three deep breaths together. And we're going to start from empty. And then breathe in. Let it go with a sigh. And again. And one last time. And just allow your breathing to return to normal, whatever that is for you. I'm noticing for myself that it's harder to take deep breaths. I just would like you to just relax into your chair or on the floor and just notice. Notice how you're supported. Relax into that support. And begin just taking some inventory of your body. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel your arms resting in your lap or in the, on the arms of the chair or maybe you're sitting on the floor and just notice. Notice how you're feeling. Notice if there's any places of tension. And if there are, just take a deep breath into them. No judgment. Just loving all parts of yourself today, however they're showing up. We started the sermon series on Sunday of leading causes of life and at the same time launched our stewardship campaign of living abundantly in uncertain times. I think these go very well together. How do you live abundantly? What does that even mean? I'd like you to just take a moment to focus on what that means for you. What does that mean to live abundantly? To really live. And just be with whatever comes up. I know for myself this last week, I did not feel like I was living very abundantly. It was hard. It was hard to see any of that. Because all I felt was illness. All I felt were the uncertain times, not the living abundantly piece, despite the brilliance of fall happening all around me. It's like overnight my Japanese maple went from this kind of dull red to this bright red color as it was changing and its leaves getting ready to fall. Are there areas in your life that the uncertain times part seems to take precedence over the living abundantly? And is it hard to focus on that living abundantly part when there's uncertainty going on in your life? And I just would like us to hold both of those in our hearts right now, just allow 
the uncertainty to be there and the living abundantly, the possibility of that or the joy of it happening for you right now to be, just hold both of those. And is there a way or a path <clears throat> that makes it easier to live abundantly? I would like to share with you what came for me as I was contemplating this meditation, worrying about things. What if I start coughing in the middle of it? Um, what if I need to blow my nose? I mean, just the very human pieces and then looking at that and kind of having to laugh at myself for that. And what I realized is that there's lots of grace and that grace is one way and one thing that helps us live abundantly in uncertain times. And how could I have more grace for myself? Grace around the fact that, you know, I had to miss so many days of work. I knew it was the right thing to do to stay home, but I absolutely hate missing a Sunday. Grace around the fact that after three days at home, I felt more lonely and depressed than I have in a really long time. Grace with the fact that sleeping is still difficult because I will start coughing when I lay down. So what are some areas for you where grace you need a little extra grace. Think about those places in your life where if you applied the balm of grace, your life could be more abundant, could have more joy, could not feel so overwhelming in the moment. And I would like to read to you a little passage about grace. Grace is a trailblazer. When my life seems unclear, we might translate that to uncertain, divine grace goes ahead of me and lights the way. If I find myself frustrated in pursuit of my dreams, Grace guides me to new portals of opportunity. As I strive for financial well-being, resources appear that open channels of prosperity. As I endeavor to repair my relationships, long-standing resentments no longer seem insurmountable. As I seek shelter, rest, and rejuvenation, Grace ignites mental and physical healing. No worldly challenge is insurmountable. No, no human error is irredeemable. Abundant good is always possible for me and for all people because of God's infinite grace. Breathe this in, take this in. Abundant good is always possible for me and for all people because of God's infinite grace. I move forward with confidence, knowing that grace paves my way.
I move forward with confidence knowing that grace paves my way. So as we begin looking at the leading causes of life, looking at how to live abundantly in uncertain times, may we remember that God's grace goes before us, that God's grace paves the way. And be grateful for that and hold on to that. So take a moment in your own heart to find how grace can pave the way for you. Allow that to bubble forth with gratitude knowing that you are also called to live abundantly, to live abundantly every day, every moment, every week, every year. And in this time of harvest, in this time of falling leaves, in this time of changing seasons as it gets colder out, may grace pave your way as you live abundantly. And may you feel that and know that in a way that you haven't before as you open your heart more and more to God's grace and guidance. Have a blessed week.